PhD in uh, 2015. And uh, then he went and worked at the, uh, uh, studied at the uh, uh, postdoc at the Luxembourg Institute for Science and Technology, and then also at the uh, University of Arkansas. And in 2021, he became a, a professor in uh, Xilin University in China. So Dr. Chow aims at uh, solving problems by first principle simulations. And his research focuses on ferroelectric, magnetic, and multiferroic materials. And uh, he's going to be talking about that today. So I don't want to take up his time, but just to briefly uh, uh, show you some of his, oops, some of his recent work. Uh, he's, uh, 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 which is quite uh, extensive already, but just uh, he's worked a lot on, on magnetic interactions and magnetic like interactions and ferroelectrics and multiferroics and antiferroelectrics. And these textures that can form in these materials in, in both spin and atomic displacements are of course what leads to their useful and interesting properties. And so that's what he's gonna be describing uh, today to us. So I will make some comments at the end, but the way this was work is we'll, uh, I'll immediately turn this over uh, to Professor Chow and uh, he will give his presentation. If, if at any time you have a question, you can type it in, into the Q&A panel and address the questions uh, afterwards. So uh, in about uh, 45 minutes. And um, so you can type them in at, all, at any time, but they'll only be uh, discussed at the end. Um, and uh, uh, any, uh, I think that's it. So uh, without any further ado, I'm going to turn it over to our speaker for today. You can go ahead and share your slides and turn on your audio. I'm going to mute myself and we look forward to hearing the talk. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for the invitation and the introduction. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes, please make it full screen. For the okay, uh, perfect. Okay. So uh, let me start. Uh, so I'm very happy to give a talk in this very nice uh, fair lecture. Fair lecture. And the topic is about uh, electronic spin splitting between piezoelectric, fair electric, and the magnetic semiconductor. So uh, this talk is the, uh, uh, this talk is done, uh, contains several works which are done in collaboration with Professor Lauren Belich, Professor Hiro Nakamura, Dr. Peng Chen in University of Arkansas and Professor Charles Taylor the University of Paris Sakti, and Dr. Yue Wenfang in Tokyo University of Te Tokyo Institute of Technology, and uh, Dr. Remy Arias, Dr. Yulian Gosto in University of Toulouse, Professor Yu Rongyang, and Mr. Xu Li in Nanjing University, and uh, my co-workers, Professor Yan Mingma, Professor Yan Chao Wang, and uh, Ms. Xianran Liu in Jilin University. Uh, in this talk, uh, I will first introduce a bit uh, spin splitting and uh, related physics, and then I will show our efforts in this uh, area. So, uh, uh, related uh, uh, regarding two interesting spin splitting patterns. Uh, so, first, what are the electronic spin splitting? So, let's look at uh, a typical ferromagnetic material, uh, equilibrium titanate. So. In this material, if you compute the density of state, you will see at the variance line maximum, there is only spin up uh, contribution. Well, the corresponding spin down is located here. So then the spin down and spin up so are split. So the energy are not uh, degenerate. So they are split by a uh, by, uh, uh, finite value. So let's say uh, about uh, two electron volts. So this is a typical kind of electronic spin splitting. And if we look at uh, ferroelectric so material, so for example, we look at uh, non-magnetic material, lanthanum tungsten uh, nitride compound. So we can compute the band structure without including spin optic coupling. So if we're doing like this, so we cannot uh, distinguish spin up and spin down electrons by energy. So typically, we, for example, at the conduction bands, we have four, we have two bands. But once we include a uh, spin optic coupling, then at some specific key point, we, we, can, we may be able to distinguish spin up and spin down electrons. So for example, in this case, we, we will see there are four bands. So then the, the band splitting happens. And if we look at the uh, spin uh, feature of the bands, you will see, for example, this may be spin up and this may be spin down. 
So that spin up and spin down are uh, split. So this is another kind of typical uh, electronic spin splitting. And how to understand the spin splitting? So we can employ a symmetry argument. So the, we can start to uh, look at the time reversal and the inversion um, symmetries. So a time reversal is an operator that you put a metal sign in front of the time variable. Well, the inversion is the operation that you put a minus sign in front of the spatial coordinate variable. And uh, both time reversal and inversion have some uh, additional consequences on the uh, physical quantities. For example, if we look at the uh, momentum, so uh, the, if we look at the, yeah, the momentum, so momentum equals m dr over, over dt. So here r is the coordinate, t is the time, and m is the mass. Then this is uh, the momentum in classical mechanics. And uh, in quantum mechanics, so we usually use k to denote the momentum. So we can treat p and k as the same thing by uh, according to transformation. And now we examine the effect of the time reversal and the inversion on the uh, momentum. When we do time reversal, so a minus sign appears in front of dt, then p reverses sign. So it means under time reversal, k reverses sign. So we have this uh, relationship. And then if you do uh, inversion, so you put a minus sign in front of r, so minus dr, then p becomes minus t. So it means under inversion, the momentum reverses sign as well. Well, if we look at uh, the angular momentum, let's say the orbital angular momentum is given by r cross p, where r is the coordinate and p is the momentum. And uh, in quantum mechanics, we also have a spin angular momentum. And based on the fact that uh, uh, orbital and spin angular momentum are additive, then we can deduce that uh, the L and S should transform uh, identically under uh, symmetry operations. And here, we so by time reversal, R remain unchanged, but P have a minus sign. Then it means under time reversal, L, rem L becomes opposite. So similarly, S should become opposite as well. So under time reversal, S becomes minus S here. Well, under inversion, you will see R becomes minus R. P becomes minus P. Then L remain unchanged. So it means uh, under inversion, S is invariant. Then, Having this, we are able to analyze uh, the band structure. So the band structure is a dispersion of energy level with respect to K. And uh, the energy bands can carry some quantum numbers. So here we only focus on the spin quantum numbers. So we first consider a central symmetric non-magnetic material. This material contains both time reversal and the inversion. So here inversion remains spin unchanged and it put a minus sign in front of uh, momentum k. Then if we do time reversal, spin up becomes spin down, and then minus k becomes uh, becomes k. So here we will see if a material have both inversion and time reversal, we finally have epsilon up k equals epsilon down k. So it means at uh, each k point, the spin up and spin down electrons should be degenerate by energy. So we have a band structure like this. So this is uh, two bands coincide with each other here. And if we consider a ferromagnetic material, so this material have a time reversal symmetry broken, the only symmetry operation, so the symmetry operation is uh, uh, inversion. Then inversion tells you that, uh, so epsilon up k equals epsilon up minus k because the inversion doesn't change the spin angular momentum. And uh, similarly, epsilon down k equals to epsilon uh, down minus k. So, Typically, it tells you that uh, the band structure so is symmetric with respect to k equals zero, but there are no symmetry operations linking spin up and, and spin down state. So in general, spin up and spin down should be split by energy. And if we look at the ferroelectric or pedal material, so these kind of materials are lack of inversion. So here we only have a time reversal. Then time reversal tells you so epsilon up k equals so and the time reversal spin is flipped and uh, the momentum got a minus sign here and i when k equals zero you will see at uh, the zero momentum point spin up and spin down are degenerate but uh, at uh, a non-zero k 
there are no uh, degenerate between spin up and spin down. So typically the band structure looks like this. Yeah. So after looking, uh, after understanding the spin splitting from the point of view of uh, camera also on the inversion, now we will see, so what causes electronic spin splitting? We look at three electrons in vacuum, and in that case, spin up and spin down should be, energy level should be degenerate. And when you apply a magnetic field, external magnetic field to this uh, system, then the spin up and spin down channels should be uh, split by energy. So this is a typical Zeeman spin splitting, and uh, it is described by this uh, Hamidoni. So mu is a uh, so lambda factor times a uh, Bohr magneton. And uh, in, mag in ferromagnetic materials, so typically in this material, even without uh, external magnetic field, there is uh, some spontaneous magnetization. And because of the spontaneous uh, uh, magnetization, there will be some internal effective magnetic field, so which is proportional to the magnetization. And such uh, magnetic field can, of course, couple to electronic spin yielding an uh, effective Hamidoni here. And it means in ferromagnetic material, even without uh, magnetic field, spin up and spin down energy level should be split. And it is uh, Zeeman spin splitting. Well, in uh, ferroelectric or piezoelectric material, so in this kind of material here, uh, this material doesn't contain uh, spontaneous spin, uh, spontaneous magnetization, but uh, this kind of material are lack of inversion center and because of spin optical coupling. So there is a term like this. And the gradient of uh, potential is the uh, electric field somewhat. And the P is a momentum operator, so it's somewhat at K. Then you will see, so there is a electric field cross K times uh, sigma. So it means in this material, there will be a effective magnetic field, which, are depend which depends on K that can couple with electronic spin. And in this case, we can have two types of spin splitting. So one typical one, the, the typical one is a rush bar, and another typical spin splitting is termed as vessel hall spin splitting. And uh, so normally in a material, so the spin splitting Hamidoni is given by this. So typically we have an effective magnetic field depend on K. Or of course, it can be constant uh, so independent of K, but uh, the, the most general one can be written like this. And uh, then we can, so if it, so it is a two by two matrix, and uh, we can diagonalize this uh, Hamidoni yielding uh, two energy levels. So one is a higher energy and another uh, have a lower energy. So if we make a difference between the higher and the lower energy, energy level, we will arrive at a spin splitting with a magnitude defined by this one. And uh, the spin splitting magnitude is proportional to the absolute value of the uh, effective magnetic field inside the material. Uh, here, by solving the equation, you will see that the, spin the, the spinner quantum states typically depend on electronic momentum k. And uh, here, having this state, we are able to define an uh, expectation value with respect to the spin operator. So this is the uh, Spin magnetization of the electrons, and uh, it is a distribution in the k space. And the distribution of spin magnetization in electronic momentum space is called a uh, spin texture. So, for example, we can have a spin texture like this and like this. So, there are various different kinds of spin texture. So, typically, we have a linear rush bar spin texture, which is a voltage and the linear Dresselhaus spin texture, so it is uh, uh, anti voltage And we can also have a cubic rush bar spin splitting uh, with uh, this uh, beautiful spin texture and the cubic Dresselhaus spin splitting with the texture, spin texture like this. And uh, recently in literature, uh, there are so a different kinds of uh, spin textures was discovered in several materials. For example, in the twin state graphene material, uh, the spin texture so can be like this, and in the hybrid uh, organic in organic perovskite, so this is anti ferromagnetic material, and this is a, a polar material. So we can have a spin texture like this and like this. 
And another concept uh, we would like to introduce is the uh, spin precision. So typically, the effect of Hamiltonian is given by this. And uh, if we assume, for example, we can assume that the effective magnetic field at k point is uh, along that direction with the magnitude of b, then the effective Hamiltonian is given by this one. And uh, so we can, of course, so this Hamiltonian contains no time. So it's uh, a stitch, so you can solve the stationary short energy equation. And we can also solve the time dependent version of it. So it will arrive at a spinner with two components, the component xt and the component yt. So here, let's assume that initially the x component is uh, 1 and the y component is 0, so that uh, the spin is perpendicular to y, to y direction. So let's say initially uh, the spinner is along z, uh, z direction. And then we can solve the extraordinary equation. We finally arrive at the solution here. So x t equals uh, the omega t cosine omega t, where omega equal equals to mu times t. So omega the, the angle angle frequency is proportional to the magnetic field, also proportional to the spin splitting uh, magnitude. And uh, then we can look at what does it mean. So having, ha, having the spinner solution, we are able to define the spin magnetization by this formula. And we can compute it. So having the x component of the spinner given by this one, and the z component of the spinner given by uh, this uh, uh, formula. Well, we will see the y component of the spinner is always 0. So it means. Uh, if your magnetic field is pointing along that direction and the, your electronic spin is initially aligned along the direction, then uh, based on this, based on this uh, Hamiltonian, your spin will uh, persist over this plane, so which is perpendicular to the magnetic field direction. And uh, the precision uh, frequency is proportional to the magnitude of the effective magnetic field. So. This is very useful. Uh, yeah. So in general, your magnetic field is pointing along this direction, while your spin may be not perpendicular to it, but uh, having a finite angle here. And in that case, your spin will persist over, uh, over the magnetic field along uh, over this plane. So you will see the component uh, uh, the component along the magnetic field is then changed. Well, the in-plane component will change uh, periodically with the frequency uh, proportional to the uh, magnitude of the effective magnetic field. Based on this, we are able to de uh, design spin field effect transistor. So typically, such device is uh, organ organized like this. So you have a ferromagnetic material here with the magnetic uh, magnetization pointing to the right. It is uh, a source code which injects electrons into the uh, semiconductor. So this is a semiconductor material. And uh, after electrons are injected uh, into these semiconductors, we can use, let's say, magnetic field or gate voltage to manipulate the spin, uh, the, the, the electronic spin. And, and in the red, you have a magnetic material with the magnetization pointing to the red. This is a drain electrode, uh, which acts as a detection uh, to, to detect uh, the electronic spin. And uh, Typically, for example, in, in some ferroelectric material because of the, or, or in some piezoelectric material. So typically, uh, there are some uh, finite spin splitting. And uh, um, when the electrons are in injected, so with spin pointing to the right uh, into the semiconductor, it will diffuse from the left to the right. So we can, we can consider the length when growing the material. We can use, uh, we can control the length L so that when electrons transport from the left to the right, it uh, uh, takes the time so that uh, after the time, the spin proceeds over half the circle. Then the in-plane component of the spin are reversed, and uh, which is uh, not compatible with the green electrode magnetization. So it means the, these electrons will be back scattered to the left, then you cannot, you can barely detect uh, the spin current. And it uh, adds, uh, sounds as if you are in a situation of the red, uh, of the red traffic light. 
And uh, if we add a uh, gate voltage into the materials so that uh, your uh, effective magnetic field is doubled, and after the transporting from the left to the right, the, because the frequency is doubled, then it will go the whole circle. So initially pointing to the right, after the transportation, it is pointing to the right by the same precision. And then the electronic spin magnetization and the uh, magnetization in the ferro ferromagnetic material here are compatible then the electrons are allowed to transport, then it sounds as if as it is in the situation of the green light. So it is the basic spirit of the design uh, of spin transistor. But uh, to uh, use, to utilize the spin transistor, so we should somewhat avoid spin relaxation. So what is spin relaxation? So typically you will see because the effective magnetic field depends on K, it means uh, the quantum spinner state depends on K as well. So during the electronic transport, because of the impurities, defects, and uh, some uh, phonons, so the electrons should be scattered. After scattered, the electronic momentum should be changed. And uh, then the quantum state is modified as well. And because of the modification, so you see the, uh, the spin magnetization is a distribution in K space. Then if the K is modified, then usually the S should be modified. It means scatter kills electronic spin, and uh, the spin transport is somewhat uh, uh, dissipative, dissipative. To avoid the dissipative uh, spin transport, furthermore, uh, if we want to extend the spin lifetime, so typically we want to have a, a, a spin texture. In such spin texture, the spin magnetization doesn't depend on K. So this kind of spin texture is called the persistent spin texture. Uh, so how to arrive at the persistent spin texture? So basically there are two uh, kinds of uh, strategies. The first one is uh, from the Rushbar and Bessel Hall spin splitting. So typically this is the effective Hamiltonian of the Rushbar spin splitting. And here after solving the equation and uh, you can compute the spin texture, so you've got a vortex uh, spin texture here. And the dress horse uh, spin splitting is given by the Hamiltonian here. And uh, it is anti-vortex spin texture. So in both rush band and dress horse spin splitting, we see spin electronic spin magnetization depend on electronic momentum K. But uh, general, generally in theoretical of pedoelectric materials, rush band and dress horse spin splitting are coexisted. So it means in your Hamiltonian, you have both these two terms. And we can re rewritten this term in uh, like this. So here, if we find a way to make tau r equals to minus tau d, then the first term disappear. So you, the, your Hamiltonian only in, includes the second term here. And the, in this Hamiltonian, we know that the uh, uh, electronic spinner quantum state is the eigenstate of sigma x matrix. It doesn't depend on electronic momentum k. So in this case, you will be able to arrive at uh, the position spin texture, which is free from the electronic momentum K. If we make uh, tau r equals tau d, then your Hamiltonian only have the first term here. So in this case, uh, the spinner quantum state is the eigenstate of sigma y polymetry, which is independent uh, on electronic momentum K as, uh, as well. So in this case, you will be able to arrive at position spin texture as well. In reality, we can tune uh, tau and tau d so that uh, tor, the magnitude of tau and tau d are equal to each other. So the, we can use spin engineering or doping. So after several trials and errors, you will, uh, if, if lucky enough, so we will arrive at uh, this uh, relation. And uh, if that happens, so the spin does not depend on k. You will arrive at the position spin texture. Uh, recently, so there is a work so focusing on the position spin texture in semiconductors, and in this uh, work, so the authors mentioned the strategy to arrive at position spin texture. So typically, by employing non-semimorphic space groups because of the existence of sublattice degree of freedom, they 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 can arrive at uh, effective magnetic field with whose orientation doesn't depend on k then the electronic spin magnetization should be aligned along a direction, so roughly so k. 
K in, in K independent. Another strategy to arrive at the position spin texture is from the Z-man spin splitting. So typically, uh, you see the Z-man spin splitting, so Hamidoni is given by this, because in ferromagnetic material, so there is some uh, 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 spontaneous uh, magnetization, and it sounds as if you have a, a magnetic field homogeneously uh, somewhat in the material, so which doesn't depend on electronic momentum K. And uh, such a uh, magnetic field can couple with the electronic spin yielding a uh, spin splitting uh, which is free from uh, K. But uh, you see, so ferromagnetic semiconductors are very rare, and usually the magnetically ordered temperature for ferromagnetic semiconductors are usually very low. And now, after introducing the basic spirit and uh, some uh, basic physics uh, in spin splitting, so now let's uh, let, let me introduce our efforts in this area. So regarding several interesting spin splitting patterns. So the first one we want to uh, share is uh, the purely cubic spin splitting with position spin texture. So uh, remember that our target is to find spin splitting with position spin texture. Let's see, spin magnetization doesn't depend on uh, electronic momentum. So previously, we can start uh, from uh, Rushbar and Dressel Horse spin splitting. We play with the uh, cupping strength of the Rushbar and the Dressel Horse so that we arrive at uh, position spin texture. But uh, is there any other mechanism that, arrive, uh, that allows us to uh, host uh, position spin texture? To understand uh, this question, let me first show you how to derive the spin uh, splitting term. So typically, for non-magnetic materials, this material contain time reversal. So in this material, there shouldn't be the sigma or k square time sigma term because under time reversal, so the sigma is a spin. So spin under time reversal reverse is fine. K is a momentum. K reverse is fine as well. So but k squared and times sigma reverse is fine as well. So typically, there should your Hamiltonian if uh, is time reversal symmetry. It doesn't contain sigma term. It doesn't. It shouldn't contain k square times sigma sigma terms as either. But you know, Hamidoni, it is possible to host uh, the linear in k spin splitting term because you see, so the k and the time also got a minus sign. Then the sigma got a minus sign here. So these two minus sign are compensated with each other. Typically, you can also have a cubic in k cutting term. Well, the linear in k terms, there are nine terms. Well, the cubic in k terms, there are total in total 81 terms. But in reality, so your crystal, so the crystal can have much more uh, symmetry operations than time reversal. So the symmetry operations will have some additional constraint to the tall and the row uh, coefficient. So let's uh, look at a, a typical example, let's say a point group. C2. C2 contains uh, two symmetry elements, the identity element and the uh, uh, element uh, which is the rotation 180 degree along Z direction. So having this uh, symmetry element, we will transform uh, the electronic momentum Kx, Ky, and Kz in this way. And uh, similarly, this uh, symmetry operation transforms the poly spin matrix in this way. So here, apparently, you will see the Kz sigma x, kz, and sigma y coupling are, are forbidden by C2z because it's got a minus sign. Well, the kx sigma z, so kx got a minus sign, kz remain invariant, ky sigma z, so ky got a minus sign, kz invariant. So kx sigma z, K, ky sigma z terms are forbidden by C2z as well. So typically in this nine term, so four are killed by the C2z symmetry. The only remaining one are this five term. So under this spirit, by searching the literature, we will see so for some typical uh, point groups, so symmetry analysis has been carried out, arriving at uh, several typical spin splitting couplings. Well, in uh, crystal, so there are there are thirty two point groups. Uh, among the thirty two point groups, there are twenty one which are lack of inversion. These Point groups can host spin splitting, but uh, 
but certainly the literature will find that uh, a thorough derivation for all these 21 groups is missing. So we carried out a similar analysis for the 21 uh, point group. So we are focusing on the lowest order in K uh, term, so which uh, can couple with the electronic spin. And we will see for most of the cases so for the, the 18 point group, the lowest order couplings are the linear in K term. Well, for the two point groups, let's say uh, minus six M2 and minus six point groups, there exists uh, uh, so so there exists a no linear spin splitting term. The lowest order in K terms is the cubic spin splitting term. So the minus uh, six M2 uh, point group hosts uh, these spin splitting. Well, the minus six the point group hosts uh, these spin splitting. So here we can see the uh, spin splitting term. So contain, so you see, uh, the quantum state, quantum spinner state for both these two Hamiltonians are the eigenstate of the sigma z matrix. It doesn't depend on k. So it means in the, both these two uh, point groups, the effective magnetic field are aligned along z direction. So it means the spin magnetization should be aligned along z direction as well. So we, we found that uh, in the minus six M2 and minus six point groups, we can have purely cubic spin splitting with position spin textures. So after uh, finding that, so we plot, uh, we, pro we provide a sketch of the energy dispersion with respect to K. So this is the purely linear spin splitting, and this is the purely cubic spin splitting. So you can see the feature between the two here and here. And uh, we predict, uh, so by symmetry analysis that uh, the Point group minus six and point group minus six M two can host purely cubic spin splitting. And uh, my our next step is to uh, find some materials to not only to verify our theory but also to provide some guidance to experimental scientists. And uh, we employ the material project. So we search for the materials with uh, minus six and minus six M two point group. So. And uh, the, the ICRC so indicates that uh, these materials have been experimentally synthesized. And uh, we have a sequence of accident materials. And uh, among them, we select three representative cases. So the first one is the, the GPO case, and then the PDF and the PCF cases. Here, we compute for them taking the GPO case as an example, we compute the band structure. And then, uh, so this is the minus six point group, our Hamiltonian is given here. And we can parameterize our effect, effective Hamiltonian by fitting the egg state to the uh, energy level, uh, to the density functional resulted band structure. And then we compute the string textures of the, from the DFT and our model. So here the in-plane component are zero and the auto-plane component are, uh, are uh, shown by the color. So you will see, for example, in some, in this, this region, so the uh, spin textures are homogeneous, so with respect to K. And uh, yeah, so then here, so the spin splitting fam uh, family, so the conventional spin splitting contains a linear rush bar and linear dress horse. And uh, the superposition of the linear rush bar and the linear dress horse by some appropriate ratio can yield a position spin texture here. And conventionally, we also have some cubic rush bar, cubic stress hole spin splitting, and uh, our work provide a, a cubic position spin, uh, cubic spin splitting with a position spin texture so in this uh, region. And uh, the next work we want to show is uh, the z mass spin splitting in anti ferromagnetic material. So remind that uh, our target is to find uh, the spin splitting with persistent spin texture. So initially, so we know that uh, in ferromagnetic materials, there is some z mass spin splitting and uh, it can yield a uh, so, uh, k independent uh, spin texture. And uh, if we look at uh, the anti ferromagnetic materials, at the first sight, the, the z mass spin splitting seems unlikely to happen in this material because in anti-ferromagnetic materials, so you have a 
so magnetization pointing to the positive direction, then you have a magnetization, magnetic moment pointing to the negative di direction. So magnetic moment pointing in opposite direction appear pairwise. So typically the magnetization should be uh, canceled. And then it sounds as if the Zeeman space splitting is not easy to happen in anti ferromagnetic material. But uh, uh, is this really true? So to understand this question, we first uh, uh, revisit the electric field versus spin splitting. We look at the non-magnetic material. Uh, we investigate the effect of time reversal and the inversion on, on the non-magnetic configuration. So here we consider a, consider a configuration contain X atoms. So these two X atoms are the same. But to distinguish by I, we label it by X prime and X double prime, and the inversion center located here. And uh, if we do time reversal transformation, because time reversal doesn't change the spatial position, so this system remains unchanged. So it means this system this have time reversal. Well, if we do inversion, then you see X prime and X double prime swap swap uh, their position. So. But you see, uh, the label so are uh, put here manually to for for uh, uh, for the convenience of I. So essentially, these two atoms are the same. So typically, if we remove the label, these two configuration are indistinguishable. So it means this configuration have a uh, inversion. Then this system contain at least four symmetry elements: the time reversal, the inversion, and the the time also followed by the inversion, let's say the parity time symmetry and the identity. Then previously we show that the four material contain inversion and time reversal. So the energy should be degenerate at each key point for the spin up and spin down energy levels. When you apply a electric field into this material, so the inversion is killed. This is killed and then the system have still have time reversal. The time will also uh, protect uh, the twofold degenerate at k equals zero point, and then the spin splitting should be k dependent. So, so this is the electric field versus spin splitting in non-magnetic material. Now we look at the electric field effect uh, in the anti-ferromagnetic material. So we consider anti-ferromagnetic material. So this uh, configuration contain X species, and but here you see the X uh, atom contain magnetization, magnetic moment. X prime have a magnetic moment pointing upward, while X double prime have a magnetic moment pointing downward. And here, if we do time reversal, although time reversal doesn't change the spatial position, but so it uh, flips the magnetic moment. So the Magnetic moment carry the X atom remain uh, so in opposite direction. Well, similar also for X double prime, it flips, and uh, so it means this system have no time reversal. If we do inversion symmetry, so the inversion sweep the X prime and X double prime, then X prime becomes here and X double prime becomes here. So after the transformation, these two magnetic configuration look different. So this system has no inversion symmetry either. But this symmetry can have a parity time symmetry. So if we do time reversal transformation, you arrive at this configuration. And if we follow by a inversion, the x double prime changes here. And x prime changes here. So finally, you arrive at a configuration here. And this configuration is an identity is identical to the initial configuration. So we know this system contain parity time symmetry. Well, the per so the symmetry element here for anti ferromagnetic material with this configuration now contains parity time symmetry and identity. Then time parity time symmetry preserve uh, the uh, the degeneracy of spin at each key point because P remove, uh, so change spin up to spin down. Well, I doesn't have effect on spin. So T change K to minus K, 
Well, I changed my scale to k, so it means after the period of time transformation, this uh, creation remains. And uh, then the spin up and spin down are degenerate here. If you apply an electric field, so this symmetry element is broken, then this system contains no uh, symmetry element uh, uh, regarding time reversal or inversion. Then it means time reversal and the uh, it means spin up and spin down and the level should be split. So we can have an electric field induced Z mass spin splitting. Uh, a heuristic way to understand the Z mass spin splitting in antiferromagnetic material is to consider the magneto -elect electric coupling. So from this, we, we know that electric polarization creates magnetization by the magneto electric coupling. And it means in that if Inside of the magnetic material, if you apply an electric field, it creates polarization, then it will also create an effective magnetic field, which is proportional to the electric polarization here. And such effective field can, of course, couple with electronic spin. And uh, the coupling coefficient uh, is somewhat have a similar uh, algebra structure as the uh, magnetoelectric coupling coefficient. And the biosystematic symmetry analysis, we finally found that there are 21 uh, magnetic point groups that can host uh, such uh, uh, Z-mass spin splitting induced by electric field. After having that table, we can, of course, uh, find some material in material database. So here we employ the um, uh, magnet data, so a database involving various magnetic material and magnetic structure. We can find several uh, good candidates which can host uh, such Z-mass uh, spin created by electric field. Here we select two representative cases, so SFSO and FTO case. So both of these two members are uh, antiferromagnetic material with a nail temperature which is close to 200 Kelvin, so relatively high. And uh, we compute uh, the uh, electronic band, uh, band structure uh, as a, so in the presence of electric field. And uh, we then we extract uh, the Z-mass spin splitting around the gamma point. And uh, we plot it as a function of electric field. We found uh, that uh, the spin splitting magnitude uh, show perfect linear relationship with, uh, with the electric field. For uh, FTO case, uh, electric field of six uh, uh, megavolt per centimeter can create a Z-mass spin splitting of 55 uh, milli electron volt. So typically creating such uh, uh, such sizable uh, Z-mass spin splitting in non-magnetic material, so for example in a wide band semiconductor, will require roughly a magnetic field of, of about uh, 400 uh, tesla. So it means the trade-off uh, between electric field and magnetic field uh, seems uh, uh, seems good. Uh, we also found that so so here you have a electric field so for the for example pointing along this direction and here you have a electric field pointing let's say along this direction opposite direction. So you will see from the band structure that uh, if you uh, switch the electric field, then the spin magnetization is also switched from a positive value to a negative value. So it means uh, electric field can not only create uh, the Z-mass spin splitting, it will also uh, uh, manipulate the electronic spin in antiferromagnetic material. And uh, let me show you that uh, the Z-mass spin splitting in antiferromagnetic materials can lead to several interesting phenomena. By looking at, by searching the literature, we see, so for example, the electric field switchable non-collinear, uh, non-linear photo current in uh, antiferromagnetic material. So thanks to the Z-mass spin splitting, and uh, also we found so in literature the gate controllable magneto optic uh, curl effect in antiferromagnetic material. So also originated from the spin uh, Z-mass spin splitting, and uh, here let me recommend the uh, uh, work. So this, in this work, uh, Professor Alexander, uh, Alexander and the co-workers have done a thorough classification of spin splitting with respect to magnetic space group. 
So it can be found uh, at uh, the fifth review material, so a paper published on this journal. Uh, to finish my talk, let me make a short summary. So in this talk, we have introduced uh, uh, three traditional spin splittings. The rush bar and dress hall spin splittings occurs in ferroelectric or pedoelectric materials, and the Z-man tape spin splitting occurs in ferromagnetic materials. So normally, the Z-man spin splitting is somewhat momentum independent, while the rush bar and dress hall spin splitting is momentum dependent. Well, we show some uh, concepts or notions regarding spin precision. So in materials, there is an effective magnetic field. Uh, because of that, the electronic spin will proceed uh, over this uh, effective field. And based on this, we are able to design the spin field effect transistor. And to, uh, to avoid the spin dissipative transport, so we want to somewhat avoid spin relaxation. Spin relaxation is a notion that so when during spin transport, the scatter uh, sca uh, the scatter change the electronic momentum because the uh, momentum and the spin are locked uh, somewhat with each other, then the spin state is killed by the scatter. So uh, causing dissipative transport. And to uh, enable dissipative spin transport, we want to create uh, spin spin with spin magnetization in independent of electronic momentum. Let's say the position spin texture. And uh, we show uh, by uh, previously people found that uh, by the combination of rush bar and just hole spin stations, well, it is possible to create a position spin texture. And in our work, we have a show, for example, uh, a purely cubic spin station with position spin texture hosted by two point groups. And we also show uh, 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 approach to arrive at uh, Z mass spin splitting of the anti ferromagnetic materials, which is created by electric field and uh, tunable by electric field as well. So, uh, yeah, my talk is finished. Thank you very much for your attention. Okay, great. Really, really appreciate that. That's uh, uh, really interesting that such uh, fundamental um, uh, things need still to be worked out. So, so. Uh, uh, should we start with, let's start with uh, Cyrus. Uh, Cyrus, do you have a question you'd like to, or comment? Sure. Um, so yeah, I, I had a quick question about the, the anti-ferromagnetic uh, uh, cases. So you, um, in these cases, do you include uh, spin-orbit coupling? Does spin-orbit coupling change change things? Uh, yeah, so thanks for, uh, for, for the question. So it is a very nice question. So, Typically, uh, here we examine uh, numerically exa examine that. So if we, so here the calculation involves spin of the coupling. We also have done uh, calculations without the inclusion of spin of the coupling. After that, uh, the band structure doesn't change much. So typically, if we remove the spin of the coupling, the z mass spin splitting doesn't uh, uh, doesn't change much. So okay, so it definitely doesn't of, require yeah. spin orbit. Yeah. If you remove that, uh, the band structure looks uh, also similar to that. Okay. Uh, yeah. yeah, maybe maybe one more question. So the um, you were you were showing this this uh, persistent spin uh, that came from either a linear or cubic coupling between spin and k. So. Um, you so are are there already cases of the of the this linear coupling is is um so you you focused on the the purely cubic coupling right uh yeah so here in these two groups so uh no linear coupling are allowed by symmetry so typically the lowest order coupling are the the cubic one well in 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 these cases there so the lowest order coupling is linear but uh, there can exist uh, some cubic one. Yeah, but because here, so you see uh, the cubic one sh should, uh, uh, should appear as a perturbation, uh, a higher order perturbation than the linear one. So it means usually at small k, the cubic one can be, uh, so, so can be uh, uh, thrown away, yeah. But here, because there is no linear one, no linear spin splitting, so it means the cubic one is the lowest order in k term. But the but there are there are material examples of the of of the these linear couplings. 
Uh, you mean you mean here linear, right? right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So there is, yeah. So typically, uh, many ferro uh, electric material can have, uh, for example, four mm, so lead titanate. Yeah, and uh, potassium nitrate can host uh, these uh, rush bar spins for lithium. And uh, for example, the the, the dress horse one, so uh, yeah, so typically uh, in, in many, so MM2 can host both Russia and the dress horse spin solution. So let's say DINO3, a material like this, can host uh, these does it, does it have this this uh, persistent spin splitting? Uh, so typically in our work, we don't focus on that, but uh, in if, for example, in several cases, uh, it, it can be, let, let, let me see, so the spin texture, in most of the cases, it is a distorted rush bar or distorted dress horse. So typically something like that. So if you if you drag this, or if you drag this, so you arrive at, at that. But uh, in, in several limited cases, so if you, for example, play with the string or play with the electronic doping, so you can modify the spin texture family to arrive at uh, a position one like this. So, yeah, so, but, uh, uh, so these spin textures are not guaranteed by, I mean, if you search for a single material, uh, so before calculation, we are not sure if this is uh, uh, this spin texture is existed or not. But uh, in this uh, reference, so because of the time, I haven't uh, introduced much about that. So this in this kind of material, now they mean morphic uh, space group. So at some uh, specific high symmetric key point, so the spin texture is protected. So it means if you can look at a material with uh, some specific uh, space group at some specific high symmetric k point, the spin texture should look like, like that. It is protected by symmetry. So like uh, in this material, I forgot to write. So it's a BIINO3. Got it. OK, thank yeah. you. Yeah, thank you. Great. We have some questions from the audience. So so uh, the first one is, is more of a technical uh, uh, question which you didn't go into, but I'm going to uh, maybe expand it a little. Uh, so Sh Shoham Sen asked, uh, uh, when you wrote the effective uh, magnetic field, uh, how do you find out what that is in a DFT calculation? So I think the short answer is that, is that it comes through the, uh, in the exchange correlation functional. But uh, so you have this spin dependence in the functional, but I, I guess I'm gonna expand that question a little and ask how accurate uh, 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 these are, I mean, for, for, for predicting the correct kind of uh, magnetoelectric and, and uh, spin textures and so forth. Okay, thank you. So uh, this is an interesting question. So, so yeah, so it uh, comes from, let's say, uh, so uh, from the DFT numerical simulation, yeah, so uh, uh, exchange correlation function. So, but uh, by, by the, so for example, we can sh basically show you that uh, so by structure distortion, so it is possible to create uh, the internal uh, magnetic field. For example, it, so in ferromagnetic materials, of course, there should be internal field, right? Because it have uh, spontaneous uh, uh, magnetization. You, it sounds, uh, you have a magnet uh, inside the material. But in anti-ferromagnetic case, so assume, let, let's say here, so it, it's a triangle, so, with, uh, so these three sides are equal. So, so that uh, it have no magnetization in this material. But if you do a, a distortion, so like, like this, then you see, so continue here, and then this is continue here, and this is continue here. So typically this material will probably have a magnetization pointing along this direction because you see, so because this, 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 this set is not equal to this one. So typically it doesn't have to be aligned uh, along, let's say, so this direction, maybe it can be rotated. After the rotation, so yeah, of course it can arrive at uh, the magnetization. So this is a, let's say a metro, uh, yeah, so a heuristic uh, way to understand this. And uh, typically in the calculation, uh, some distortion or some the lack of inversion center will modify the electronic wave function and the such wave function uh, so can have, uh, can change the electronic distribution and uh, because of that, so typically the effective field can appear. Yeah, but uh, yeah, so it, it is just a heuristic uh, way to understand that. I have no uh, macroscopic picture regarding this. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, we have a, a number of questions. So let me uh, move to uh, Rafael Resta asked, uh, uh, how are you computing the uh, band structure in a finite electric field? Oh, yeah, uh, interesting question. Yeah, so here, uh, typically, uh, I know, yes. So here, uh, we, do, we do like that. So we, so starting from this, we, we apply electric field to this material and we optimize the crystal structure. The electric field is just used to polarize this material. And then after that, we, we start from the crystal structure, we compute the band structure. During the band structure calculation, so no electric field is added to the system. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so the electric field effect is only uh, included, included uh, by looking at, I mean, electric field change the position of the iron. And uh, mm-hmm. yeah, and uh, how to apply the electric field. So typically there is an approach. So you, you know the, the, the force, the, the force can be obtained by the burn effective charge. Yeah, so the, the, the burn effective charge, uh, you, you first compute the burn effective charge of this material and then you modify the, let's say the first principle of code to, to employ, I mean, based on the burn effective charge, you can add a additional force into the system. And uh, this allow you to optimize the crystal structure in the presence of electric field. After yeah, yeah, yeah. That, so, yeah. 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 We're gonna, we're not going to have enough time to fully explore this, but but the thing yeah. is, uh, so that's really good, and I think uh, I'm doing some of that myself. So I definitely don't yeah. argue with it. But but e- even if you keep all of the atoms fixed, there should also be an effect uh, from an electric field. So I think maybe uh, Raffaella might have been uh, alluding to that. So so, but that's not being included right now. It, it, it's up through. Your symmetry arguments, I guess, still apply even, yeah. if, even if you were to fix the uh, atom positions. Uh, um, um, I'm going to skip to uh, uh, Stanislav Kamba. Said, "Great talk, thank you." Uh, yeah. So he said, uh, he asked, uh, uh, "Can I claim that linear multiferroics, uh, that is, uh, ferroelectric antiferromagnetics with broken T and I symmetry?" Will they all exhibit uh, Rashba splittings? Uh, I think so. So I think so. Yeah. So you mean multiferroics, right? Uh, because typically in multiferroics, both the uh, time reversal and the inversion are uh, are broken. So typically, it can host uh, Rashba transfer force and even Zeeman spin splitting, and it can be tuned by let's say magnetic field or electric field. I think multiferroics uh, is uh, much more interesting interesting to host uh, the spin splitting. Thank you. Mm-hmm. So, so uh, I'm I'm going to let you uh, answer uh, uh, Dr. Sen's uh, second question here offline, but but just uh, I don't think we have enough time. But he would, I guess, but unless you have a quick answer. Uh, but but the question is 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 do you have can you say which materials have high values of uh, of the tau coupling? I'm sorry, uh, like, which coupling? We, we, the, 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 the coupling of, I, I guess the, he's talking about the magnetoferroelectric uh, coupling. Oh, Do you have yeah. a, so you have, you've looked at some sample materials, but, but uh, yeah. I guess yeah. you don't, uh, uh, the question is, I guess, uh, how many materials have you checked for this? Uh, Do you have a, uh, like a database of couplings or uh, you have some examples? Uh, Typically, we just check these two materials, but we check several cases. So for electric field along a different direction. So typically, the conclusion I can say is that if you're after adding your electric field, there will be an effective magnetic field into the material. If the magnetic field is aligned along, let's say, the predominant anti ferromagnetic vector, the Zeeman spin splitting is somewhat uh, sizable. Otherwise, it is, uh, yes, it is very tiny. Yeah, yeah. Okay, very good, very yeah. good. We're, we're, we've run out of time, but I want to thank, thank uh, you again for such a fantastic uh, talk. I, I, I really learned a lot. Let me share some final uh, wrap-up uh, slides myself. So okay. thank you. Let me just uh, find my okay, slides. Thank you for the invitation. Yeah, I'm yeah, gonna... thank you. It was great. So let me just... Uh, How to... Uh, um, where did my, sorry, I've lost my, I think I have to go full screen, and then I have to.
to the right one. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. hopefully I'm sharing the right thing now. Um, so, uh, so this I showed before. Let me just uh, wrap up by saying that uh, uh, you can see uh, videos of the previous talks, including uh, this one uh, online on the uh, website. And uh, I, I'm really excited about next month's talk, December 8th, uh, Michelle uh, Kuga uh, in, from uh, uh, EPFL in uh, Switzerland will talk, be talking about uh, determining structural prototypes of uh, ferroelectrics. And I want to mention the, uh, the workshop, uh, um, uh, which will be February 5th through 8th, 2023 in Golden, Colorado at the Colorado School of Mines. And I really wanna encourage you to consider coming to that. Uh, that'll be an in-person uh, workshop. And uh, the registration deadline is coming up. It's December 1st, uh, 2022. So you can go to the website uh, uh, here to register. So please uh, consider coming there. And uh, we have a quite an exciting uh, program lined up with uh, uh, exciting, exciting invited speakers already. Uh, of course, the whole program is not settled until we get uh, the abstracts in on December 1st. And uh, again, I want to thank, uh, it's not, there's some overlap with the organizing committee for, uh, for these FARO lectures, but there's also additional people involved in the organizing committee. And I want to thank them for helping out uh, with that as well. So, and with that, I guess we're going to wrap up today's uh, lecture and I wanna thank you all for uh, participating. If anybody's question did not get answered, uh, uh, I, we will uh, uh, try to do that by email afterwards. So, uh, so thank you for, for, uh, for joining us today and have a good day, bye-bye.